In this video, we're going to look at the entry box for tkinter and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from tkinter.com and continuing on with our intro to Kinter playlist. In this video, we're going to look at the entry box and the entry box does exactly what it sounds like. It allows users to enter information into the app, to type stuff into the app. So we're going to build this basic app that asks the user's name, lets them type in the name, click the button, and then we'll flash up on the screen, hello, whatever their name is. This will teach us how to create an entry box, but it'll also show us how to delete information out of an entry box how to use the information that's been typed in, and a bunch of other cool things. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Intro to Tkinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Also, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. For every free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. So I've got a file. I'm calling it entry.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code. We looked at this starter code in the last video. And let's come down here and let's first create a label. So we want a little label at the top. I'm just going to call it my underscore label. We looked at how to use labels in the last video. So we just want a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, enter your name. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and like a size 24, something like that. Then we want a my underscore label dot pack. Let's give this a pad Y of 20 to push down the screen a little bit. So now let's create an entry box. So to do that, I'm going to call this my underscore entry. Again, you can call these things anything you want. If I had more than one entry, I would name it something a little bit more descriptive. But since we've only got one entry box, I'm just going to call it my entry. You'll find that I often call things my whatever, my label, my entry, my button, if we're only going to create one of them. So this is going to be an entry the widget. And again, we always want to put these things in root. Now, strictly speaking, that's all we have to do for this. Now we could, there are many other attributes. And if you're interested in all those other attributes, grab a free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. It lists all of them in there. You can check it out. In this video though, uh, we're just going to leave this as is for now, just to see what it looks like. So that's my underscore entry dot pack. And let's give it a pad Y 20. We'll probably play around with this a little bit after we've created it to see what it looks like. But for now, that's good. So let's also create a quick button. So let's create a button. And I'm gonna call this my underscore button. It's gonna be a button widget. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say um, answer like that. And let's give this a command of answer. And we don't have this function yet. We'll create it in just a second. But for now, let's my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y20 push down the screen a little bit. So before we move on, let's just very quickly rough out, let's say define answer. And for now, I'm just going to pass. We'll work on that in a minute. So finally, we want to create a hidden label. So I'm going to call this hidden underscore label. And let me move this down so we can see it a little better. And it's going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing. And I'm going to give it a font of, again, let's just go Helvetica. And size, I don't know, 18 or something like that. And let's hidden underscore label dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20. Now this isn't going to show up because we've not put any text in it, but later on we're going to output our answer there just for fun. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this guy. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python entry.py. And when we do, we see enter your name. We've got this box. Uh, we can type stuff in, we can click this button. It doesn't do anything yet. Now check out this entry box. This is the standard size. It is just sort of by default. And we could change the size of this if we want by playing around with the attributes. So let's go ahead and do that. And the entry box is a little weird when it comes to changing the size of it. A lot of things in Kinter, we can just give a height and a width attribute. Not really so with the entry box, we can give it a width attribute. So let's say, uh, 250 pixels. If we save this and run it, we say, whoa, that is very big. Now this isn't actually 250 pixels in this case. Most things are pixels. You can see, man, it just keeps going. Well, that's pretty big. It's actually characters. So 250 written characters. And that's a little weird. We could switch this back down to say 50. If we run this guy again, 
Now that's better, it's longer, but it's still very skinny. And maybe you want very skinny because, you know, this is generally just one line of text. You can make it wrap around with many lines, but if you're gonna do something with multiple lines, you'll often use a text widget, and we'll talk about that several videos from now. Uh, this is mostly just for like one line of text. Okay, that's fine, but maybe we want it bigger. If we give it a height attribute, it doesn't actually have a height attribute. So we can say height of, I don't know, say 25. If we save this and run it, we're going to see nothing different from the first one. In fact, it doesn't even know what it is. It's going to get if it's an error. So that's not great. So we can't use height. What can we do? Well, what we can do, you'll remember, as I just said, this is not 50 pixels, it's 50 characters. So if our characters are bigger, the whole box will be bigger. Well, how do we make our text characters bigger? With the font attribute. So we can give this a font of, say, Helvetica. And I don't know, let's go 18, something like that. If we save this and run it now, in fact, let me just clear the screen, then run this guy. Now we're going to get a much bigger box, right? It's also longer because 50 characters, and you'll notice the text is bigger too. 50 characters are bigger, so it's longer because of that. So it's a little wonky. It's a little weird, but uh, you'll get used to it. And it's actually kind of nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out, well, let's leave it. Let's put it at 20 and let's change this to 24. See what this lands us. Okay. That's a little bit better. We've got a nice big box and there we go. So, okay. Now, how do we make this thing do something? Like, how do we get whatever, if I type in John, how do I get that out of here and then do something with it? Well, super simple. We can call the dot get function. And to do that, we'll let's do this up in our function here. So to do that, we just name the entry box, which is my underscore entry, and then just call the dot get method. And that will get whatever's in there. Now we could assign this to a variable if we want, uh, like that, or we could just flat out use it like this. So let's uh, output to the hidden layer. So let's go first, let's go hidden underscore label dot config. And let's set the text equal to nothing. So there's nothing in there now. And I said layer, there should be label, right? So there's nothing in there now, right? But every time we click it, if this function is already run in the past, there will, there will be something in there. So we want to delete whatever's in there. So uh, let's uh, delete hidden label, change that. Now let's output to hidden label. So to do that, we just call hidden underscore label again, dot config, and then set the text equal to that my entry dot get. Now you'll notice we did not put this in quotation marks because this is a function. We want this to run. It will return whatever we've typed in. So, okay, let's go ahead and do that. Um, do we just want to put that? Actually, let's do an F string, a Python F string. And let's wrap this in brackets. And now let's say hello, and then whatever that name is. So, okay, that looks good. Let's come back over here and run this, see what this looks like. So I can type in John, click the answer, it says, hello, John. If we then type in Tim, it says, hello, Tim. Now, what if we don't type in anything? It just says, hello. Well, that's not great. Let's run some logic to make sure the user typed in something in this box. Well, we could do that. Let's go uh, logic to make sure they typed in a name. So here we could just go if my underscore entry dot get, and this is the Python equivalent of saying if my underscore entry dot get equals true, right? It's true when somebody types something in there, it's false if they didn't type something in there. So basically we could say, hey, if it's true, that means they type something in there. If that's the case, let's output it. Else, let's grab this guy and let's say error message. And let's paste in instead of that, let's say, and this doesn't need to be an F string, it could be a regular string. We could say, hey, you forgot to enter your name. All right, so see how that looks. So, oh, hey, you forgot to enter your name. John, hello, John. 
Very cool. Now you'll notice every time we click this button, it outputs and it does a thing, but this still has something in it. So how do we delete whatever is in there? We could, let's see, if it's true, there's something in there. Let's get whatever's in there and put it on the label. Then let's also delete the entry box. And to do that, we call our my underscore entry dot delete. And now we have to tell it which characters in the box we want to delete and they're numbered. So it goes from zero basically to the end of the box. So we want to delete everything from zero to the end of the box. So that's how we do it. All right, let's come back over here, try it again. And then I'll type in John Elder. Hello, John Elder. And you'll notice, boom, it automatically deletes whatever's in there. Very cool. So let's see, what else can we do with this box? What if we want to put something in the box? How do we do that? Well, let's come down here and let's create, let's see, where's our, our button? Create a second button. And I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And instead of giving this pad Y of 20, uh, let's give it a pad Y of five instead. And uh, I don't know, five, because we're kind of running out of space here. So uh, let's call this other one insert button insert button and let's have it say uh insert john <laughs> right and here let's give this a command of insert all right so we don't have that function yet so let's come up here and create it so let's define insert and here we want to insert john into the entry box well how do we do that well we just call my underscore entry dot insert now this function takes two arguments. It takes, the first one is where do we want to insert this? Well, I want to insert this at the end of the box and we'll see why that's important in just a second. What do we want to insert? I just want to insert the word John. So, okay, that works. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. And here let's insert John and boom, it pops John right in there. So the dot insert. Now let's go Tim. If I want to then insert John, it puts it at the end, right? So that's because we put it we, we told it to put it at the end. We could have said, hey, put it at the beginning. So instead of that being end, we could have zero, All right? So let's save this and run it, see how that changes things. Now, if I type in Tim and click insert, it puts John at the beginning and Tim second. And we could do any number, right? So we could say, you know, put it at the two position. So that's gonna be whatever character is over two, right? So Let's run it again. I don't know why you would want to do that. So let's type in Tim. Now, if I want to insert John, it says TI. So this is the oneth position and the twoth position. And then after that, boom, it types in John. And then after that is still M. I have no idea why you would want to do that. Hello, T John. <laughs> right? But, you know, if you wanted to, you could. Now we already know how to delete, so we don't really need a delete button. Uh, because we've already done that, but you could create your own delete button just by, you know, uh, let's see, where do we do it? Right here, this is how we delete my entry dot delete from the zeroth position all the way to the end. And that's all there is to it. So we can resize our entry box. We can delete the entry box. We can insert things into the entry box and we can get whatever the user typed in and then do anything we want to it. Again, remember, you can always call my entry dot get or whatever you called it, dot get. A lot of times it does make sense to, you know, create a variable and set that equal to my underscore entry dot get, especially if you then want to delete whatever's in my entry dot get, but yet still keep a record of whatever that was. You can assign it to a variable. So also just keep that in mind. And that's kind of all there is to it. So that's the entry widget. Be sure to check out the next video in the playlist. It teaches all about pack versus grid to show you how to move your widgets around the app. And that's coming up in the next video in the playlist. So check that out. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.